Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Karis Dillon and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video, we looked at substance medication induced psychotic disorder. In this video, we're going to address catatonia. So let's begin. In order to be diagnosed with catatonia, you have to have three of the following symptoms. Now there are going to be 12 different symptoms that we'll talk about, but for the diagnosis of catatonia, you have to have three of these. So number one is stupor. And what this means is essentially having no movement and no kind of movement that is in relation to the environment around you. Number two is cataplexy holding a posture that does not work with Earth's gravity. It's kind of a strange, almost artistic posture, but it's not for that purpose. And we don't know why individuals, some individuals with catatonia do this, where they have this cataplexy, but it's just one of the symptoms. We have waxy flexibility, which means having a resistance when someone tries to position you even just a little bit. Let's say your arm is straight up in the air and a doctor or a nurse comes over and just tries to take it down a little bit. You might have quite a resistance toward allowing that to come down. Number four is mutism, not being able to talk or give a verbal response when asked something. And this isn't like can't talk, meaning the vocal cords aren't there. It's just something psychologically where they're not able to talk. Sometimes they talk, but only to certain people. Negativism means having no response or opposing a response to any form of instructions. Posturing is a spontaneous movement. Number seven is mannerisms, any type of movement or any way that you react back and forth with somebody that may be appear to be odd given other people. Number eight, stereotyping. If you have repetitive movements and you don't move beyond it, um, you might have non-goal oriented movement or direct directed movement, meaning I go forward, I take a left, I go right, I take another left, and everything is very square as you take those movements. Agitation, not because of external stimuli, it's just a basic overall kind of moody agitation. Number 10 is grimacing, just not being happy and you've got a whole kind of frown on your face all the time. Number 11 is echolalia, and this means mimicking someone else's speech. And then number 12 is exopraxia, mimicking someone else's movements. If catatonia is the major disorder and the person has another condition like an anxiety disorder, the label we would give them would be catatonia associated with anxiety disorder. Uh, another example, catatonia associated with mutism. Um, catatonia associated with major depression, those types of things. The other disorders that are seen quite a bit with catatonia are neurodevelopmental disorders, psychotic disorder, bipolar disorder, depressive disorder, as well as others. Catatonia tends to be diagnosed by a clinician in an office, and it occurs up to 35% of those with schizophrenia. It's not uncommon to see more catatonia with those with bipolar disorder or depressive disorder. It is important though to look at other disorders like neurological conditions that could be causing the catatonia. It's also important to examine all the medications the person is on to see if any of them could be causing the catatonia. There are lots of mental illnesses as well as medical issues in which catatonia plays a role. 
there may be many neurodevelopmental disorders where it can show up. So there can also be psychotic disorders, bipolar disorders, and depressive disorders where it tends to be present given a certain amount of people. It can come from cerebral folate deficiency as well as perineoplastic disorder. Some of these can be considered immune disorders as well. Catatonia is not really considered its own class of mental disorders or illnesses. We kind of stuck it in at the end of the psychosis or psychotic disorders. Catatonia can exist because of another mental illness, a medical condition, or maybe even labeled as an unspecified catatonia. The system the symptom that most diagnosticians see with catatonia is a marked psychomotor disturbance, which can mean the person doesn't talk or move as much. They simply don't like to engage, especially when they're interviewed or are being physically examined. When they do have excessive motor activity, it can be seen as peculiar or a bit abnormal. Not all catatonia is seen as the same given different individuals. If immobility of an individual is severe, which is sometimes known as a stupor, there may be moderate negativism. If there is severe disengagement from others, they may be mo there may be severe mutism. All individuals need to have supervision because if motor movements become excessive, which may unintentionally cause harm, there are also risks for malnutrition, self-injury, and exhaustion with these three individuals. All right, well, that is the end of, uh, all right, well, that is the end of the video on catatonia. I hope that you liked it. Um, that will be the end of our psychotic disorders, and we will be moving into mood disorder and specifically bipolar disorder next. So we're really getting through some of the more severe ones first. All right. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. Have an amazing day, and I will talk with you soon.